Okay, friends, in this video, I wanted to discuss the current state of ray tracing, the immediate future of ray tracing, and then kind of intermediate to long distance future of ray tracing games. And really, is an RTX card even worth it for ray tracing, especially based on all of the information that we have out now from NVIDIA, all of the information we have out now from the developers that have actually commented on implementing ray tracing in their games. I think that we can have a decent discussion surrounding it. So let's do that. Before we do, this video is brought to you by expressvpn.com forward slash UFD. My friends, if you're looking to protect your internet with privacy, anonymity, security, and unblocked content through geo filters or whatever, you should check out ExpressVPN. They have incredibly fast speeds that have been consistently faster than other VPN providers. They have VPN locations in 94 different countries, including South Africa. So that means I get a local VPN server, or you can use a South African server if you just want to experience what it's like to be me for a day. That's totally fine as well. They have 24 Seven customer support. They have apps for every device, Windows, iOS, Android, Mac, Linux, your router, if you want to do it at a network -wide level, everything is easy. And then getting it set up for ourselves personally has been nothing short of just not an inconvenience. It connects with just one click when you want to turn it on and then it's internet without restrictions. And they don't monitor your activity or connection logs because they believe that your business is your data. The plans start at less than $7 a month and come with a 30 day money back guarantee. So take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking on the link in the video description or in the pinned comment expressvpn.com forward slash ufd that's expressvpn.com forward slash ufd for three months with a one-year subscription visit expressvpn.com forward slash ufd to learn more take back your internet privacy today and now let's talk about taking back your ray tracing today or whether or not you're actually going to have any because that's at all the topic that we're going on about so when nvidia launched their rtx cards the reason that they gave behind the RTX lineup or naming change was the fact that it's going to be introducing new features such as ray tracing and deep learning super sampling and that they have new cores in them besides their traditional CUDA cores that we've all come to know and love. So we have ray tracing cores as well as tensor cores. The ray tracing cores are obviously for ray tracing. They help us with that. The tensor cores also help for ray tracing by actually AI denoising them. And then they also perform another function called deep learning super sampling. So when NVIDIA launched the RTX cards, they presented us with ray tracing and deep learning super sampling as the key features that we should be expecting out of these cards with ray tracing being the basic whole fundamental purpose of the keynote that Jensen gave with him talking about it so many freaking times and telling us how it just works, how we always get the reflections we lead, need. And wow, look at the subsurface scattering. You've never seen gummy bears look like this before in a video game. And on one level, he's completely correct. Ray tracing is a gorgeous technology. Having light bounce around like it's supposed to with rays hitting and reflecting and refracting the way that you would expect in the real world is amazing. But are we being sold a bill of goods that don't really pan out our RTX cards actually any good at ray tracing even still with the additional hardware I'm not so sure so we looked through all of the statements that we could find by game developers who are actually implementing ray tracing because we've heard a lot of conjecture by people saying it's going to make it easier and it's going to make it faster but is that the actual reality by the people who are implementing it in the actual games that we're going to see so first up let's take a look at Battlefield 5 so that demo that came out showed showed us that with ray tracing on, it was running at 60 FPS at 1080p, 40 to 50 FPS at 1440p, and less than 30 at 4K. DICE, the developers of the game, were apparently stated that they were apparently surprised that the game ran at 4K at all with RTX on. They haven't used the hardware for very long when they did produce the demo, so there is that. They developed the ray tracing with the Titan V and not with the 2080 Ti, so they got to use tensor cores and not ray tracing cores, but currently ray tracing is used primarily for specular reflections in Battlefield 5, and the RTX reflections run at full resolution. So DICE was reportedly not using tensor cores on the RTX cards in the demo, even though that's all they developed on with the Titan V, so that means they were 
either taking advantage of the RT cores or just the CUDA cores. If they were to offload the ray tracing denoising to the tensor cores, we should see a performance pickup. We should also see some more visual fidelity increase, but ray tracing is clearly the bottleneck of this game. When people are playing the beta of Battlefield 5 with a 1080 Ti, they were seeing much better frame rate than what's being quoted for the ray tracing. So the game has actually been delayed from October 19th to November 20th, as they, as DICE put it, to tweak the gameplay uh, and Tides of War live service being blamed there. Besides the whole Red Dead Redemption being launched in October and they probably should have never scheduled it there, it seems like ray tracing and optimization issues are more likely, especially since developers have haven't had access to the hardware for enough time, even by the time they produced a demo, let alone the fact that they could launch on October 19th. So Eurogamer actually reported that a few optimization tricks are being used to ensure consistent 60 FPS performance at 1080p resolution. But as we've heard from DICE themselves, they had to pull back to only specular reflections in Battlefield 5 because of how much power it actually takes to run this ray tracing and they had to tone it down because otherwise even the RTX 2080 Ti, a $1,200 card couldn't keep up with the ray tracing. So the game looks great with RTX on in the footage that you're watching right now, but we've played the game, at least the beta, on various quality settings and it kind of looks almost equally as good in the beta and non-RTX almost definitely runs a heck of a lot smoother. So the visual fidelity isn't that massive. Obviously there might be compression in the video that we would definitely see if we were playing the game live. But so far, DICE Battlefield 5 is a no-go for me for how much ray tracing is actually gonna impact that game. So let's go ahead and move on to the next big game, Metro Exodus. So Metro Exodus is gonna use ray tracing for ray trace global illumination to vastly improve natural lighting. It's gonna use ray trace ambient occlusion to add pixel perfect contact shadows where objects occlude light. And the game, along with ray tracing, will also have hair works and advanced physics. Some people who got the hands on to the Metro Exodus have stated that scenes are much more authentic due to the soft realistic light transitions, subtle realistic color transfers, and their dynamics, as well as the subtle illumination and shading of small details. And that that's, it's all very impressive. But during that demo, the game was run on a 2080 Ti and was just playable running at 40 FPS with ray tracing actually turned on. And even with the Metro Exodus trailer that came out a couple days ago, the performance hit of ray tracing, as you see it switch from off to on, is horrifically apparent even with the YouTube video. It looks legitimately phenomenal, much more than all the other ray tracing demos that we've seen, but it doesn't matter how pretty it is when the difference we go from 60 plus to roughly 30 and you can see it in a gameplay trailer, it kind of loses the point of what it actually means to play video games. Metro Exodus, great looking game, not gonna perform well. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that game has already launched. Let's go ahead and talk about its implementation of ray tracing. So in an interview with Trusted Reviews, the game's level design director said ray tracing, quote, lets you blend shadows together and mix illuminations. And that it creates just that little subtle push of realism, which is part of the narrative in a way but ray tracing will only be added to the game post-launch because it's not even here. It can't hit 60 FPS at 1080p, and according to PC Games In, it was at 33 to 48 FPS with ray tracing on at 1080p with the 2080 Ti. So there's no guarantee that graphical settings were even maxed out there and we're still seeing below 60 FPS gameplay with a $1,200 graphics card. And by the time it even gets added, which is one of the arguments that I made for ray tracing all along, by the time it's even going to get added to this game, people have already beaten it, people are done with it. Sure, the last little stragglers will act actually get a fidelity improvement, but how many of those people who are going to play Shadow of the Tomb Raider when ray tracing comes out, are going to have RTX cards themselves. So ray tracing is impressive, but it's not ready for mass adoption. Game developers are struggling to implement it in a way that actually doesn't impact performance too much, even if many people are saying that it makes lighting and lighting scenes in video games much easier. It doesn't matter how easy it is, if at 1080p it can make your game nearly unplayable with the best graphics card that's on the market. So much of the success of this technology of ray tracing depends on developers actually implementing it. But when they're developing games primarily for console, as we've seen for many, many years, 
it's going to get lost in the dirt because they're developing for things that actually don't have ray tracing tech based into them. So that means that developers will either have to spend more time working the PC port because not only do they have to develop for ray tracing cards, they have to develop for the normal cards that are already there and make those ports, which is either going to take a heck of a lot more time than we've seen from console port to PC finish, or it's going to be badly implemented and it's going to run crappy and nobody's even going to turn it on, which at that point we could expect developers to just skip it altogether because they're not developing for the vast majority of their consumer base. But the only way you get the vast majority of your consumer base running RTX cards is if they see that there's a reason to actually have it in their games. Ray tracing in its current form, especially from the demos we've seen, doesn't seem anything more than a real gimmick. There's nothing to actually say this this is what you want. All we've seen is, wow, that's a huge performance hit when that's actually implemented. Yeah, it looks better, but I already dropped quality settings to make sure I hit 60 FPS. And I'm sure a lot of other people actually want to do that as well. And certainly ray tracing will look better and it will mature and it'll run faster as more game developers actually implement it. But it's that chicken and the egg scenario of even with the developers who are implementing it now, they're not seeing enough returns on it to make it seem like it's gonna be a long-term venture for them. So we've already talked about Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Battlefield 5, and Metro Exodus as games that have ray tracing, and especially the developers. But there's other games that Nvidia announced that are going to have ray tracing as well. So first up, it's a set of Corsa Competition. Do you really want a performance hit because of natural lighting in a racing sim? Uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna say most people don't. Then there's also Control, which is a supernatural third person action adventure game, and it's being developed by Remini, the people who make Quantum Break, Alan Wake, Max Payne, then there's Atomic Heart, it's an action RPG set in an alternate historical kind of timeline, and it looks interesting, and it's gorgeous with the help of ray tracing, but they're a fairly new developer, and the game could go either way, so who knows if it's gonna be a breakout hit with ray tracing. And then the, the point of that is just the fact that we have three major games that people actually care about that have ray tracing in it. The way you get adoption is by bringing it to most of the games that people care about. So far we have three, a set of courses on that line, then there's Control and Atomic Heart, which are just kind of meh, and then games that hardly anybody's gonna care about is MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries. It's a giant robot shooter thing. Tank absolutely hates this genre. Uh, he likes, it's like the Titan part of Titanfall, but extremely slow instead of fun. And then there's JX3, which is a JRPG MMO game with ray tracing and there there's a listed which is a world war ii shooter mmo and it looks fine but it's not triple a so why would it even like why why would this incentivize anybody to get a ray tracing card why would this incentivize any developer to want to implement ray tracing it just wouldn't. But that brings us to the other part of these cards that I think we should care about. It's not the RTX. Honestly, Nvidia, if they would have named these DLX or DLSSX or anything, just GTX with DLSS, that's a mouthful. Deep learning super sampling is where you should be wanting to put your money. It's not in ray tracing. Ray tracing, as far as the games that we've seen and the developers that have how they've been talking about it, is a gimmick. It's not worth it. Sure, it looks better. Sure, it can be easy to implement, but it sucks to run. And most gamers want to actually run high performance, not necessarily the best graphical fidelity. So of the list of games that Nvidia gave us that were RTX optimized, there were a few that were ray tracing, most of them negligent to the general consumer populace. But then we have deep learning super sampling games that a lot of people do care about. So that's Arc Survival Evolved, Final Fantasy 15, which should help improve performance quite a bit, Hitman 2, PUBG, Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well, We Happy Few, although that's kind of past its prime right now, Darksiders 3, which a lot of people are excited for coming up, and Scum, which is a brand new H1Z1 thing that people are all the rage about. Some mega games it's implemented in is Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, which most people have already played it, and you're not gonna wanna go back to it just because it has deep learning super sampling. And then Overkill's The Walking Dead, which is like Left 4 Dead, but The Walking Dead, so it's a zombie game. The point there is that deep learning super sampling is apparently coming to a lot more games that a lot more people care about. And not only that, so Nvidia, when they announced how many car, how many games were gonna support RTX stuff, it's still the same amount of games that support ray tracing. Since that August 20th announcement, they've also announced nine new games that will support deep learning super sampling, which tells me that developers and game makers are jumping on board with that technology rather than the ray tracing technology. Because since its announcement, we haven't gotten any promises from anybody. 
company. This is like the switch when they were trying to push this platform. So Bethesda coming on board got us Doom, it got us Skyrim, and it got us Wolfenstein on the Switch, and it's gonna get us the next Doom on the Switch as well. And that was a huge effort in validating that entire pieces of hardware's reason for existing. Ray tracing does not do that for the NVIDIA RTX cards. It can't because not enough developers are getting on board and the developers that are on board are only on record saying that it's not really working that well, especially in normal gameplay environments and especially in competitive games like Battlefield 5. So on the surface, it seems like not enough developers or at least well-established developers are showing significant interest in ray tracing right now. The few games that have been confirmed to include ray tracing elements so far are okay, but we're going to need to see bigger games join them if the tech is really gonna become mainstream. There are other developers working on upcoming games that have pledged support to the tech in the future, but we have no idea to what degree. From what we've seen, the RTX cards, while very impressive, aren't powerful enough to enable real-time ray tracing in any big way, and it seems like a lot of false promises from NVIDIA, and it's definitely not gonna happen at higher resolutions, which is where a lot of people have been upgrading their monitors to. So developers might love the tech, but they should also know how limited it is in its actual current state with the hardware that NVIDIA has delivered, which probably doesn't put it high on the priority list of things for them to prioritize when they're developing their game. DLSS, deep learning super sampling, on the other hand, is something games, current and upcoming, could definitely benefit hugely from. Whether NVIDIA likes it or not, most PC gamers prefer higher performance over prettier lighting and reflections any day. And higher performance is what we should be getting from DLSS because we have anti-aliasing enabled. DLSS helps to offload that to the tensor cores and it makes it so that you get a much faster running game at higher resolutions with higher quality detail settings. And that's something that I think we all want. We want faster gameplay that looks prettier. We don't want worse performing gameplay that looks prettier. That's not what we're going for. That's what ray tracing delivers us on this hand, whereas DLSS delivers us on the other hand. So I wanna hear from you guys. What do you think of what NVIDIA's brought to the table with ray tracing? I know that there have been demos. Epic Infiltrator demo has been something that a lot of people have been quoting, but it's just a demo. It's not an actual game. It's not coming out. Epic has been showing this off since 2013. It's the same demo with ray tracing baked in. We're not getting that in games. In the games we are getting it in, it sucks. So I wanna hear from you guys, what do you think of this? Are you excited for DLSS? Are you excited for ray tracing? For the people who have told me that the RTX cards are not for gamers and they're for developers, I don't believe that's true because they also released the Quadro lineup. The Quadro lineup's for the developers. The RTX cards are for the gamers. I don't really see NVIDIA pulling out something that actually makes sense here. I wanna hear from you guys down in those comments down below. But before I wrap this up, I wanna remind you that this video is brought to you by expressvpn.com forward slash UFD. So if you wanna take back your internet privacy today and you wanna get three months free on a year purchase, you can check out the link in the video description to head on over there. Don't forget that there is a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not happy with their service, but I don't see a reason why you shouldn't be because we've been enjoying it since we've installed it. Anyways, hit that like button if you enjoyed more of a deep dive into the, what's going on with the developers and all of that kind of stuff. I want to hear your feedback on that. Please get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too.